welcome back to the post game show. Let's get stuck into the other match that was played tonight out in Portugal, where Manchester City put in a five star performance, beating Sporting Lisbon by five goals to nil. Michael, you're a happy you, lad, aren't you? You stole my line there. I was about to say five stars. <laughs> Someone's definitely give you that. Might have been in a year, hadn't you? <laughs> City were outstanding. I mean, all they need to do now is win, is, is win the cup because. Some of the football that they're playing, away from home as well, is just ridiculous at times. Having said that, Sporting Lisbon were terrible at the back. They thought there might have been um, an offside here, but you can see there clearly he's onside. Mares puts it in, and that was goal number one. In fairness to Sporting, they did have a few counter-attacks, but yeah, there was miles off the pace. They was playing with wing-backs, and they was getting caught upfield. And Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva in the centre midfield, Rodri just the pivot, it just ran the game. Bernardo Silva was on the score sheet not just once but twice, but this was his first goal, Thierry. Impressive? That was uh, outstanding. To be able to keep the ball on target, he went to get the ball really high after the bounce. And I know it doesn't look like it, but trust me, that's a difficult skill. And like I said earlier, and I said that off air also, this is my favourite Man City player this year. Mm -hmm. He's just outstanding for me. What he does and what he offers, not only scoring goals, but his activity is second to none. There's some people that say that Bernardo Silva performs better when Kevin De Bruyne isn't on the pitch, but tonight he proved that he can do just as well when he's there. I think those two players are the two best attacking midfield players in the world right now. Uh, I've thought that about Kevin De Bruyne for a long time, but certainly the performances of, of Silva this season, I think he's on the same level as, uh, as Kevin De Bruyne. And I think they are two very special players. And the, the really fascinating thing about Silva is there was talk of him leaving in the summer. Mm. You know, you know, Pep Guardiola, maybe if a big bid come in, maybe he'd have, he'd have moved him on. But uh, no, a fantastic player, what really What do you like is. about him so much, Jamie? What is it about his, his well, game? Well, he's the, the two players, De Bruyne and Silva, what I like about them is they're brilliant technically, but they work as hard as anyone. Mm. And that is what you need to do. I, I don't care what anyone tells me about top players not having to work hard. The top players, when you see them, we talk about the top teams who we think can win this competition, they're the hardest working players. So nobody for me has an excuse, no player has an excuse or a reason not to work for the team when you see them two working like that. For right now, on paper, and certainly the way they've played in the Champions League, the best team in the Champions League, whether they'll win it or not, mm -hmm. I do believe Manchester City are the best team in Europe. But the best team in Europe does not automatically win the Champions League. So that's obviously something for Man City going forward. But there's no excuse for any player not to work hard. Yeah, he's, he's, he, does it, he does it to the T, as you said. But there's something I want to talk about with Bernardo Silva is that I never thought that we were going to, to forget. Well, I didn't really, but we are not mentioning so much that David Silva is not there anymore. Mm. And we were all saying, who's going to replace him? And I think they have found a man. They've also got a special player in Phil Foden there who's come through the academy, Micah, and he scored the goal to make it 3-0 in that first half. At this point, half an hour into the game, it was already game over. Yeah, game set and match. Mahrez as well causing havoc, but he was playing in this false nine position. Look at the amount of numbers they've got in the box there. And again, it's atrocious defending, but he's always sniffing out the danger, thinking about a, a mistake, and it, and it happens, but... Then comes number four, Bernardo Silva again, again reaching that line, that high line at the play. Defender, what is he doing here? There's no danger behind him. The danger is Bernardo Silva doesn't go to him and he tucks it away coolly. And I mean, we talk about composure and running the game. Everything he did in his game today was just a different level to anyone I mean, on the pitch. Thierry, the, the, the way I watch Manchester City play and the type of goals they score, the only team it reminds me of is your team for Arsenal. That every, everyone seems to score almost a tap in from a pullback or it's an empty net at the back post. Well, well, at, at, at Barca we used to do that. It, it's a pep work. It, it's, it's because you go through the wing to finish. Um, you have to stay in your position, as you, as you can see. And it's just, it's just stay in your position, make the box, they will find the free man all the time. And more often than not, there is always a guy arriving from deep. He can be good again. We saw Bernardo Silva. Uh, Sterling wasn't stupid. There is no one in, in the middle. You turn, you wait, pass it back. Or your winger is on the other side to tap it in, as we saw at the beginning of the show. And now our Sterling scored the goal against Norwich. Uh, but what with Pep, staying in your position, it's key. Ball will find you and just make the box. 
and more often than not, it will be a tap in. I know it sounds easy, but all the very best to, to copy that. Yeah, well, <laughs> speaking of Sterling, Thierry, I mean, what a screamer this was, eh? This is right out of your book, isn't it? Right out of your, it was a... Are you talking to me, or A Sterling <laughs> stunner. Look at that, Thierry. Look at the technique on that. He scored one similar. I bigged him up before the game, and he didn't let me down. He really didn't. Gets his goal, gets this his is... assist. And it's consistency in his game now. This is what I'm saying. I think he scored one like that against Southampton a couple of years ago. I don't know if you mean last the minute, dying minute mm. of the game. Before, when he was at Liverpool, that would have ended up in the stadium at Everton. Now, it goes in the back of the net efficiency. But this is what I'm saying. This is for me, as you mentioned before. This is the guy that has to play all the time. And I know last year, I don't know what happened with Pep. He must have gone into an argument. I've been there also with the guy. But <laughs> he has to play. For sure. What's it like having an argument with Pep? You don't win. Well, you, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you might see the bench more often than not. <laughs> Blimey. Blimey. <laughs> <laughs> well, five goals scored by Manchester City tonight. They've reached 200 Champions League goals quicker than any other team have done it. They did that in 97 games. And Peter Schmeichel was lucky enough to see those five goals in person tonight in Portugal. Peter, what a game. What a performance from Man City. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, on that kind of form, uh, I don't see any team in Europe beating them. They are everywhere on the pitch. They are just brilliant. The way they work, the way they work as a team, the way they move as a team, uh, even the front players that lose the ball, they're chasing back, they're winning the ball back quickly. And then literally every time they have half a chance to score. And five goals today. Uh, I have to say the defending from Sporting was embarrassing. I have no idea why you want to play five at the back right from the beginning. Then you concede the first goal and you still play five at the back and stay deep. And then you concede the third and the fourth and it's just the same, no change. So in a way, it was made a little bit easier for, for Man City, but they took full advantage. And I'll tell you another thing, you know, when you when you let up, when you want to arrest a few players, and you got players like uh, Fernandinho and Gundogan and Chinchenko, you can you can throw on. It's really difficult to see many other teams in Europe being able to compete with that. And maybe just, and I'm going to make Jamie quite happy now. Maybe just Liverpool in there. They were fantastic today, Man City. Well, I hope you're right, Peter. But Peter, I wanted to ask you about your time at Manchester United and for a few years before you won the Champions League in 1999, there was this feeling that this is something that we need to get or the pressure of trying to get it. Right now, I think we all feel Manchester City are the best team in Europe, but what is that pressure like when you haven't actually got that first Champions League? Well, it's, um, it's difficult. But I think it was more difficult back then because today you play very similar in, in the Premier League to what you would do in the Champions League. But back then in the 90s, we were playing one kind of game in, uh, on a Saturday where we could throw everything forward and just go and go and go and go. But then we came out into Europe, we played against a team that were you know, better with the ball, better tactically uh, th than we were. And we're taking advantage of the space that we were leaving behind all those players going forward. And it took us, uh, at least the, t the team that won the first Premier League, it took us about four, four years to get to grips with playing in Europe and I think uh, 1997 we got beaten by uh, Dortmund in the semi-final in a very tight game and that was kind of the moment where we thought well we're on the right track and of course two years later we succeeded but it's difficult it was difficult then I think it's a little bit more easier today because it's so similar uh, and what I saw today you know who I, I really don't know who's going to beat this team yeah, I think that is echoed in the studio here as well, Peter. Look, um, hang tight because you're going to try and chat to a few of the players um, and the managers as well. But also, I think we should have a conversation about Manchester United in a few minutes too. So we'll be back with you very shortly. Manchester United, we're in Premier League action tonight. More on that to come. Welcome back and what a return to the Champions League it was for the Premier League leaders, Manchester City. They scored five out in Portugal and Peter Schmeichel spoke to Pep Guardiola after the match. You've been talking a lot about how difficult it is 
to win the, the Champions League because of the competition. But do you feel that you are in your best situation or with the best team, with the best experience at this Peter, moment in town for this? Peter, last season we, we, we played the Champions League. We played, I think, 14 games, so something like that, or 30. We won 12, we draw one, we lost the final. So better performance in the Champions League than last season is impossible. See, it's win the Champions League. But Champions League, what is Champions League? Win the game. Uh, so uh, I know. So the people say this year have to win the Champions League. Yeah, we tried last season as well, and two seasons ago. And every time we try to to play, we try to do it. But so the, the important is after six seasons together, especially the last five, still right now after players won everything, still they fight each other, they run each other backwards. Uh, everyone, look Raheem, look Bernardo, look everything, and that say okay, w what else? Like say, um, but I'm just curious else? to know. On your current form, I mean, you, you're scoring yeah, on nearly every chance, even in the Premier League. No, I know. Who, but the, what team out there can beat you? Liverpool is uh, six points uh, behind us. Liverpool it was the, our bigger rival in the last season. They always was there. It was a pain in the ass all the time. So they are a fantastic team in Europe. Just take a look PSG today. They play. They told me really well against Madrid. And look, Inter de Milan or Liverpool or United in this competition. So. So, and, and when you are now today in February, they don't assure you in, in April or May will be like, like we are right now. So, but in the final, it... in a long competition of the Premier League, at the end when you win, is, you are the best. You are the best. But in, 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 in Champions League, is our first goal for a little margin is, is goal. Could be outside. It's, it's goal. And the difference, the next minutes, the next game for that result, it changed everything. In Premier League, no, but this competition is like this. So that's why today we were so good being so clinical. Arrive, score, arrive, score. It wouldn't just happen, it's so difficult for any open. I like it so much when you're yeah, trying to you play so it down. Yeah, thank but you. today you were the best and you know if that's your level, you know, I no, think you can go all the way. Listen, Congratulations, thank you very much. We are incredibly happy, but we can do better. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it was a great interview, Peter. Good stuff there. Um, always good to hear from Pep Guardiola as well. Um, look, I know that you are just as good a multitasker as I am because as well as both Champions League games tonight in the studio, I was also watching your Manchester United side take on my Brighton side in the Premier League. And I know you were doing just the same. You caught up on the goals. A win for Man United takes them fourth in the Premier League now. Where are they at ahead of their Champions League game next week? Well, they've they got three points today, uh, which is a, a very, very big positive. But it wasn't any different from the last three games that they've drawn 1-1. Drawn uh, they, 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 they got the, girl, uh, the goal. Uh, they still had the Gea to make a couple of really good saves. At 1-0, Brighton hit the bar. Uh, and then the, the second goal came in the 97th minute. So it's still the same, but it's, it's Champions League next week. Uh, uh, next week and it just makes a difference to the players it's a much bigger tournament it's, these are one-off games in a way you have to go and make a performance um, so hopefully when we go to Madrid next week we'll see a fantastic Manchester United team well, it's intriguing, isn't it, Peter? Because although Cristiano Ronaldo has been criticised for his involvement in games in the Premier League, we've seen in the Champions League for Manchester United just how important he's been this season. Yeah, he is an important player to Manchester United. I think one of the reasons that, that people are you know, looking at him, criticising him now, is that the team are not really playing up to what he can do. And I think that's important that you bring the ball up to him in his positions, but the team's not doing that. Uh, and that is something that needs to be worked on, of course. He scored a fantastic goal today. And if you haven't seen the goals, you should see the second one, Bruno Fernandes, absolutely fantastic. And it gives all of us Man United fans a little bit of hope uh, uh, and, and, uh, and we know that winning breeds winning, confidence breeds confidence, so hopefully they're going to take that into the next game. Peter, do you honestly believe that Man United can win the Champions League? Be honest with me now. No messing around. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of a question is that? Yeah. What kind of an answer is that? <laughs> a very direct one by the looks of it. Um, Peter, thanks very much as always. Um, good to see you've got the board up there to protect you from the sprinklers. Um, and a safe journey. I know you're heading out to Madrid for that game next week. So we will see you then. Thank you very much as always.